amazing near-death experiences. Plato. Greek philosopher and mathematician Plato wrote about one of the earliest examples of a near-death experience. In the conclusion of Republic, Plato wrote of a soldier named Er who was killed in battle. Er's body sat for several days but did not decompose like the other fallen men. When his body was about to be burned on a funeral pyre, Er regained consciousness. He told amazed witnesses of an afterlife and reincarnation. He gave accounts of planets and worlds that no one had ever witnessed. Air's story remains one of the first recorded accounts of an amazing near-death experience. Melon Thomas Benedict In 1982, artist Melon Thomas Benedict died of terminal cancer. While he was traveling toward the light, Benedict decided he had questions and wanted to see things first. In an amazing near-death experience, he recalled flying through the solar system, leaving this galaxy and traveling to other worlds that had other life. His journey reportedly took him to far-off worlds and even past the Big Bang into the void of nothingness. Benedict awoke an hour and a half later after he had died. Later tests showed that his cancer had gone into what the doctors called spontaneous remission. Susanna O'Murray when she was 11 years old, Susanna O'Murray ran out into the road right after a speeding car was coming through. The car struck Susanna and sent her flying into the air. She later stated that while she was up in the air, everything went into slow motion. O'Murray could look down at the car below and noticed a crowd of people standing around watching. Within the group were her two grandmothers, both of whom had been long dead. The two were yelling at Susanna, telling her she couldn't join them yet. With that, everything sped right back up and she hit the hood of the car in the road, ending up relatively unharmed. Don Piper. In 1989, Don Piper was in the car that hit a transport truck head on. Declared dead by paramedics, Piper was without a pulse for 90 minutes. While he was dead, he experienced music and smells which were very pleasing. He also met with his grandfather and several other long deceased acquaintances in front of a very large gate. The whole experience was deemed rather pleasant. The meeting was cut short when Piper began to regain consciousness. His return to life surprised many, including the people who had stopped to pray near his body at the scene of the horrific accident. Amanda Cable In September 2003, Amanda Cable slipped into unconsciousness after her heart stopped in the hospital. Cable left her body and was eventually greeted by the figure of her daughter, Ruby, wearing a school uniform with her hair up in bunches. Ruby urged her mom down a white tunnel to a gate. After passing through the gate, Ruby slammed the doors behind her mother. When Cable regained consciousness, she was greeted at her bedside by her husband. He had brought a picture of Ruby from the first day of school, which Amanda had missed because she was in the hospital. In the picture, Ruby was wearing a school uniform and had her hair up in bunches, a style she had never before worn. George Rodonea. In 1976, George Rodonea was pronounced dead after being struck by a car. His body was taken to the morgue where it sat for three days. When doctors began to cut Rodinea's body to undertake an official autopsy, he regained consciousness to the shock of everyone. Rodinea's shocking recovery was matched by the stories he had while he was dead. During his experience, he relived parts of his life and met with various people. With the ability to travel anywhere in time and space, Rodinea said he was able to meet historical figures and travel back in time to eras such as the Roman Empire. Dr. Mary Neal in 1999, Dr. Mary Neal was kayaking when her craft turned over. Pinned underwater, Neal was without air for up to 25 minutes before help arrived. In her unconscious state, she endured a near-death experience which told of the future. In this instance, however, it was a future she probably didn't want to know. While she was dead, Neal was informed that her nine-year-old son would die. No information concerning the specifics of his death were given, however, the prophecy came true ten years later when Neal's now 19-year-old son was killed in a car accident. Paul Eich. When he was just three years old, Paul Eich fell through the ice of a pond. Pulled from the pond by rescuers, Paul was considered clinically dead because he had no pulse for three hours. After considerable work by doctors, Paul's heart started again and the little boy lived to tell an interesting story. Paul claimed he had been floating around in the sky before arriving at a gate. He approached the gate and tried to enter but was turned away by a figure who said to be his late grandmother. As she turned him away from the entrance, her parting message was that Paul's parents were waiting for him. Anita Moriani. In 2006, Anita Moriani's fight with terminal cancer seemed to be at an end when she slipped into a coma. As her organs shut down and her body swelled, Anita later reported that she was listening to conversations between doctors and her husband far away from her hospital room. She also saw a vision of her brother traveling on a plane to see her. 
Both events were later confirmed, but Anita could not have known about them at the time. Allegedly given the choice to live or die, Anita came back to full consciousness and underwent a miraculous recovery whereby her cancer regressed to the point that doctors could find no trace of it. Colton Burpo When three-year-old Colton was laying on the hospital surgery table with a burst appendix, doctors feared for the worst. Amazingly, two hours later, Colton was out of surgery with some amazing stories to tell. He told his parents that he had met a little girl who was his sister. In fact, Colton's mother had suffered a miscarriage while carrying what would have been a daughter, but they had never told their son about this. He also told them of a conversation he had with a man named Pop. Colton was later able to identify the man in family photos as his paternal grandfather who had died years earlier. 